what on earth is happening with the silver and gold prices? First of all, we see that silver takes off one day, drops the next. Same thing with gold. We see gold take a dip and then the next day it's up. What are the things that are affecting the prices of silver and gold? I'm going to get into that in this video. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and get the bell notification clicked. That way you get updated with any new content. Today I wanted to talk to you about the prices of silver and gold. And here we can see, and I'm going to pause the ticker. Here we see that at the time of the recording of this video, silver is sitting at $18.63, essentially going up 40 cents on the day. And gold it actually dropped a little bit earlier today. It was up by around 20 bucks. So gold is up $6.72. But we are seeing these big swings in prices for silver and gold. Do you think that silver and gold continues to drop and you're thinking it's a great time to buy? Maybe hold off another day, watch it drop more, and then the next day it shoots up, vice versa. So I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that are affecting the prices of the precious metals. And in this video, we're talking about the 10 things that affect the price of silver. So the first thing obviously is supply and demand. We know that supply and demand economics 101, if there's a very low supply and a high demand, then the price is going to increase. And the converse of that is also true. If you have a high supply, low demand, then the price is going to drop. So that we can kind of just skip right over. That's very, very elementary. Um, we actually, just a quick example, we saw this happen during the pandemic. We saw that there were uh, shutdowns across the world, right? Mines were shut down, refineries. We saw, uh, you know, online retailers closing up shop, local coin shops were closing the doors. And because of that, we had a very high demand and a low supply. So we did see prices tick upwards, but let's just scroll down here. Silver scrap is affecting the prices of silver. It says at one point, photography consumed massive amounts of silver due to its light sensitive characteristics, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here it's talking about a stockpile of photographic film that has been recycled for its silver content. It's worth noting that the Silver Institute studies show much of the readily accessible stockpiles of silver and scrap have been exhausted at today's silver prices for the commodity. I know that a lot of local coin shops and pawn shops and everything, they will take in, um, you know, silverware, like silverware and flatware and things like that, because oftentimes they're, you know, sterling silver, 92.5% pure, and they'll rip off that silver and send it out for scrap. Uh, so that's one thing that you do see. So um, silver scrap, I guess if there's an abundance, um, then that's going to help make the silver prices go down. But I don't see that really affecting it too much. Now, technology is something that has been talked a lot about on this channel. We know that with Biden and the Green New Deal, that there's been a lot of talk about putting a lot of solar, solar panels into play and that that's going to be using a lot of silver. However, I heard something like one solar panel uses like one ounce of silver or something like that. It's not really as much as you would think that it would use. So this says here, as noted with the change in film technology, silver prices are directly and indirectly moved by existing and new technologies. We already know that many of these new uses for silver take advantage of physical characteristics found only in this metal, blah, 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 blah. All right. Economic trends microeconomics and here they're kind of making the argument about like jewelry and um that sort of thing in good economic times people spend a great deal of money on jewelry and items that contain precious metals such as silver likewise if it uh if incomes uh incomes are stagnant or drop such precious uh metal purchases are often the first to be deferred um you know right now we are actually you know, some people say we're in a recession. Others say we're heading into a recession. And as a dealer of silver and gold, I do see some changing in the buying habits of people. And I see this not only on my auctions or my website personally, but I see it in Instagram posts and other social media outlets, YouTube content creators. I do. And, and the people that make the comments in the videos, I do see um, a shift because when people are a little bit more fearful yeah, they will possibly buy some silver and gold or what have you. But at the same time, they're also curbing some of their spending and they're hanging on to their money a little bit tighter. And so that does make a lot of sense. Uh, and here it says, however, even in rough economic times, there's often demand for luxury products, including watches and fine jewelry. But we do see it kind of scale back. Now, 
national and global economic trends. Now, this is something that we do see, um, you know, in relation to Russia, right? We saw that there are geopolitical, um, you know, factors at play here, right? So the war between Russia and Ukraine, um, we saw that, you know, Russia uh, was being affected in terms of the purchasing of Russia's gold. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, Western nations want to cut Russia off both from using their oil stockpile and energy and trying to move away from being dependent on Russia and also trying to hit them in the pocketbook with not purchasing any of their gold. So silver along with gold is considered to be a safe haven. This means that silver is seen as retaining its value and purchasing power better than paper currency and other assets where there's economic uncertainty. The other side of this issue is that a strong, vibrant economy may decrease demand for silver and investors and other buyers, etc. Okay, now inflation. That's something that we are seeing right now. And because of inflation, because the Fed continues to raise interest rates to fight off inflation and to try to lower that inflation rate, what's happening is it's causing the dollar to go up in strength. It's making the dollar stronger. It's making this stuff stronger. And so when dollars are stronger, silver and gold prices tend to get weaker. Great opportunity if you're looking to be buying silver and gold, but um, you know it's not gonna stay that way for long. So inflation, most, an most analysts, econo economists, and investors understand that this insidious nature of inflation on portfolio value, this includes even nominal inflation compounded over long periods of time. Silver, on the other hand, is seen historically as a great hedge against that inflation. I call a little bit of BS on this because we are seeing that the prices of silver are coming down and we are in extremely high inflation rates right now, eight and a half percent, give or take. And so if anything, this is proving to the stacking community that in hyperinflationary times, this doesn't seem to necessarily be true. In regular inflation, when you're talking two to three percent inflation year over year, then, OK, that makes a little bit of sense. But with hyperinflation and right now what we're seeing with the prices of silver and gold just dropping, this doesn't seem to, to actually hold true. Now, the strength of the dollar, which is something I just said a moment ago, as the leading global currency, the U.S. dollar generally has an inverse relationship with the price of silver. Silver market participants have seen a history of strong dollar creating pressure on the price of silver. Like I just said, strong dollar, weak silver. Strong dollar, weak gold. If you keep that in mind, it's going to make a lot of sense to you going forward when you're seeing the prices dropping. You're like, oh, okay, the dollar's stronger because uh, because interest rates just went up. Gold prices, interesting. All right, so we're seeing now how the price of gold might affect the price of silver. It says, while the real significance of the gold-silver ratio is a subject of intense debate, there is a historic relationship between the price of gold and that of silver. In general terms, as the price of gold moves up or down, silver prices will follow. Some specialists trade based on the GSR, buying or selling as silver is expensive or cheap relative to the current price of gold. So the gold-silver ratio is something that I've discussed on this channel. I don't really use the gold-silver ratio to gauge my prices, um, or sorry, to gauge the buying habits of my silver and gold. I will buy silver when I feel like it's a good opportunity to buy silver, and I'll base that on historical data, the direction that I think things are going to be moving in, and also like buzz, for lack of a better word. When you are into you know content creation such as I am on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you do get a lot of information and uh, you know word of mouth travels very very quickly, and um, you know whether it be from you know other coin dealers, bullion dealers, wholesalers online retailers, um, people that are involved in the world of finance. So all this information, you do get bits and pieces and you can kind of see, you know, what direction things are kind of moving in. Gold silver ratio, it could be a good gauge if you're just looking to uh, decide whether or not it's a better opportunity for you to be buying silver and gold. But I don't really look at that uh, very closely. I kind of view it as apples and oranges, if you will. Let's see, nine interest rates. We just spoke about that. All right, so they're talking about, um, you know, increase in interest rates that makes the dollar stronger, makes the metal prices 
go down. Uh, 10, this is the last item on the list, government policies. All right, so it says, due to its long history of use as a medium of exchange, silver markets continue to be influenced by government actions and policies. For example, while gold gets most of the attention as reserve central banks around the globe buy and sell silver bullion, national mints such as the U.S. Mint consume a great deal of the world's supply of silver by producing both bullion and numismatic quality coinage. All right. So government policies um, and with the direction of, you know, how the mint is going to be producing uh, silver and gold uh, coinage, um, that can also affect silver and gold prices. And we're actually seeing that now that gold prices for eagles and buffaloes are starting to increase with premiums because uh, the U.S. Mint is not going to be making the gold eagles anymore this year for 2022. So that's causing uh, premiums to go up when you are looking to buy your 10th quarter ounce, half ounce, or one ounce gold eagles. So keep that in mind as well. So those are the 10 items that are affecting the silver price. I'm curious as to what you think is affecting the price of silver the most that were on this list. Let me know in the comments down below.